Hello, welcome to another video. We will be solving a trig equation and we have secant x plus tangent x is equal to rad 3 and we're restricting our answers to between 0 and 2 pi. So we're just doing the very first complete cycle of whatever function we're using. Well, hope it's not secant or tangent. Well, it's going to end up being sine or cosine. And how do I know it's going to end up being sine or cosine? The thing is, you really don't know how to manipulate secant. You don't know how to manipulate tangent as much as you know how to manipulate sine and cosine. So, general recommendation, whenever you get a problem that is written in terms of any trig function other than sine or cosine, I strongly recommend that you rewrite whatever the expression is or equation is in terms of just sine or cosine or both of them and then do what you want to do. Unless it is so obvious that you know what you're doing. But right now, I don't know what I'm doing. So like I said, let's change secant and tangent to what we know, sine and cosine. So we know that secant x is 1 over cosine x. And we know that tan x is sine x over cosine x. Okay. So this way now I'm beginning to think what can I do because I need to be able to solve it. Okay. Um, well, I need to get rid of all the denominators, which is usually the first thing you want to do in solving an equation, get rid of the denominators. You don't need them. So I'm going to multiply each of these terms by the denominator that I see, which is cosine. So we're going to have, if I multiply this by cosine, I'm going to get 1. If I multiply this by cosine, I'll be left with sine x. And if I multiply this by cosine, I'll be left with the square root. <laughs> what was that? Square root of 3, <laughs> cosine x. Okay, that was square root of 3, not square root of x. You have an equation now that is written in terms of sine x and cosine x. And remember, it is not easy for you to have um, sine x and cosine x equal each other unless you're talking about the complementary angle there, but there's a 1 standing here. And that makes it very, very difficult for you to do it. So, what you want to do is uh, and it's, it's tough. So usually, whenever you have sine and cosine, you want to bring the Pythagorean identity into this because somehow, when you know that when you square sine and you square cosine, you can find a way to manipulate or replace or substitute the, square, the squared sine or the squared cosine. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to, because I'm, I'm trying to find, I don't see a connection. Okay, I'm going to try to square this left hand side and then I'm going to square this. Now, a dangerous thing you must avoid. Do not combine this square root with anything else. So make sure it's a single term so that when you square it, it, it doesn't create another radical. Because if you, if you move this one here, then you're going to have radical 3 cosine x plus 1. And by the time you square the expression, you're going to have radical which you can't use for solving your equation. So this state is the best state. Put the radical alone so that when you square it, it just disappears. So we're going to square both sides. So we're going to square both sides. So if we square both sides, we're going to have 1 plus sine x squared will be radical 3 cosine x squared plus sine x multiplied by 1 plus sine x equals, if we square this, this is going to be um, 3 cosine squared x. Okay, so let's write this out. If we open this up, it's going to be 1 squared plus sine x plus sine x. It's going to be plus 2 sine x. And if we square this times this, it's going to be plus sine squared x. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have 3 cosine squared x. Okay. 
Now, this is where it becomes really, really tough. You're asking yourself, I need to convert sine to cosine, or I need to con convert cosine to sine. Well, this expression makes it easy for you because you don't know how to deal with this. So you might as well look for a quadratic expression in terms of sine. So go here and replace this cosine squared by one minus sine squared so that everything you have in this is in terms of sine. How did I decide? Because of this guy here. Because if I rewrite this as cosine, then what's going to happen is you're going to now have an equation that has sine and cosine and you're still stuck just like the way we're stuck now. So what we've got to do is say this is one plus two sine x plus sine squared x is equal to three times one minus sine squared x. Okay, so um, this is the same thing as one plus sine x plus, sorry, one plus two sine x plus sine squared x equals three minus three sine squared x. Okay, so let's put everything together and form a, an equation that we can then solve as a quadratic. So here, I'm going to have sine squared x. This is three sine squared x. When this comes over here, it becomes sine squared x plus three sine squared x. That's four sine squared x. Then I look for the other term. So I've taken care of this and this. So I'm gonna write this plus two sine x. And then I have one. When this three moves over here, it's gonna be one minus three which is gonna be negative two, and I have zero here. Nice. See, everything is divisible by two, so I don't wanna have big numbers I'm working with. I can divide the entire equation by two, so that what I have left here is two sine squared x plus sine x minus one equals zero. And this looks like you having a quadratic equation, two x squared plus x minus one equals zero. How would you solve this? This can be factored, okay? So the whole skill of factoring that you've learned, you bring it in here. How do you know you can factor it? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this two and multiply the very last term. So two times negative one gives me negative two. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have negative two, which is gonna be on top here. Then I'm gonna say, I need to think of two numbers that I'll multiply together to get negative two. But when I add the numbers together, I'm gonna get positive one. Well, those numbers must be two and negative one. So it has to be two and negative one, so that when you add these two together, you're gonna to get positive one, which is the number here. So that's the idea here. I'm gonna go here and replace this expression in the middle, the positive one, with two and negative one. So it becomes two sine squared x, plus two sine x, so I've used this, minus sine x, minus one equals zero. So I'm gonna group them together. I'll take these, I'll take these also. Okay, leave the sine in the middle. What's common to these two? It's gonna be two sine x. And what's left is gonna be sine x plus one. Minus, what's common to these two? Nothing, so when nothing is common, you take out one. So I'm just gonna write one here, okay? Um, and then you have sine x. But this minus, if it divides this minus, it becomes a plus equals zero. So we're almost at the end of this quadratic equation because now what you have here is you have two sine x minus one and sine x plus one is equal to zero. So when you have this equation like this, it means this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. So you're gonna have two sine x minus one equals zero or sine x plus one is equal to zero. And if you solve for sine x, what do you get? You get sine x is equal to one over two or sine x is equal to negative one. So tell me, if the sine of an angle is one half, what is that angle? What is x? 30 degrees or pi over six. Well, 
we want to find all the values between 0 and 2 pi. Well, you know that if you've memorized your unit circle or the chart, whatever you use, you know that, okay, let's just make it easy. This is the graph of sine. We want it to be one half. This is one, right? This is one, it ends here. So this is one, so this is one half. Okay, so you know that for this one that has one half, you're gonna get two answers, one here, one here. The first one here is at pi over six or 30 degrees. The second one here is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So that would be 150 degrees because it's just pi over six away from this angle. So your x is going to be pi over six. And the second possible answer is 150 degrees, which is the same thing as five pi over six. Okay. Or it could be this one. When is the sine of this angle negative one? If you go here, the only time you're gonna get negative one is at this point, which is at 270 degrees. Again, all these are basic things you already have memorized, okay? And then this is gonna be at, what's this angle? Three pi over two, 270 degrees and three pi over two. So the question is, are these three answers valid for the original equation? Because there's this thing about you dealing with radical signs. When you have to square both sides, you can trust the answers that you get at the end because you've done something that's capable of removing what could have been a problem. So you have to go back and check what the problem was initially. So what we're going to look at is we're going to plug in each of these values into origin, the original problem and see if it's going to give us the right hand side. Um, this is going to be 1 over cosine pi over 6 plus 10 pi over 6. Let's see if it's going to give us this. So we have um, Cosine pi over 6 is rad 3 over 2, so the reciprocal will be 2 over rad 3, and this is 1 over rad 3, we know that. And if you add these two together, you're going to get 3 over rad 3, which is the same thing as rad 3 when you rationalize it. Okay, that's good. So the first value works for us. Let's go to the second one. We have um, secant, secant 5 pi over 6 plus 10. 5 pi over 6, well this is going to be negative 2 over rad 3, and this is going to be negative 1 over rad 3, and that's going to give us negative 3 over rad 3, which does not give us this value. It gives us the negative version of our answer, so we can take it. So this one does not work. No. And then we check the last one. Well, it's going to be secant of 3 pi over 2. Oh, secant is not even defined at 3 pi over 2. Remember that it's a reciprocal of cosine. So cosine is 0, and 1 over 0 will be undefined. So we can't even go ahead with this. So secant um, 3 pi over 2 is undefined. Okay. Therefore, we don't even need to bother with this because we already got a part that doesn't work. And it means this part also does not work. Therefore, the only correct answer is x equals pi over 6. Remember to check your work because somebody had to save me. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.